Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is your Geek Out for Monday, June 25th, 2012. The Geek Out is once again brought to you by GoToAssist from Citrix. Working in IT can be crazy and unpredictable, as many of you know, unless you have GoToAssist. It'll help you stay on top of it all. GoToAssist world-class remote support allows you to solve your users' problems quickly from anywhere. And for a free 30-day trial, visit GoToAssist.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PERILLO. Are desktop tower PCs dead? I know many people still love their desktop computers, especially gamers, people who love modifying and uh, you know doing fun things with their machines like inserting things that don't require USB ports, you know, like PCI cards. At least we used to insert PCI cards. I haven't done that in God knows how long. I mean, when have I ever needed a desktop in the past decade? Well, I do have a Mac Pro. I do have that AMD machine over across the room, but gosh, come to think of it, I use notebook computers more than anything, and I think that's more of what the majority happens to be doing. And maybe desktops are really... Wait a minute. When was the last time I saw one advertised in a circular? You know, I do read circulars. Believe it or not, I, I look at ads. It's, everything's going mobile. Are desktop tower PCs dead? We just didn't know it? What's the best computer for your parents? Well, I guess the best computer is the one that you want to support, because inevitably they're going to be calling you. No, they're not going to text you. Maybe they might. Uh, they might email you, but it's more than likely going to be a call. Or every time you go and visit, they're going to ask you a billion questions that they've written down on a sheet of paper and organized in order of annoyance. So what's the best computer for them? Well, maybe you should find out more about what they want, what they need, less about what you care about, because you may want something that Windows is perfectly suited for. They may want something that would better serve them in the world of Apple. Maybe it's Linux as a solution. The bottom line, you can't make decisions for someone else unless you know what it is they want and what it is they need. That may be contingent on budget. It may be contingent on actual features and certainly support. Because remember, even them having some official line to tech support, you're going to be the first line of defense. Is being a cyber vigilante ever justified? Well, taking matters into your own hands may seem like it's the only option. And especially if you band together with other people, you may land yourself in prison. And it could be for a good reason. I mean, maybe you were fighting the man and doing the right thing and going for justice and all that. But when you circumvent law, uh, that means you're in the realm of being a uh, criminal and doing things that aren't exactly legal. Fun, perhaps. Disruptive, absolutely. Uh, but taking matters into your own hands uh, may just, well, get you in trouble. And it doesn't matter if you're breaking into someone's house or you're breaking into someone's computer. Breaking the law is breaking the law. iPad versus Surface tablets in the Enterprise. I don't think we're talking about the Starship Enterprise, although Picard did walk around with something that looked an awful lot like an iPad. Before they had iPads, we only dreamed of iPads. It looked more like an iPad than it did what Microsoft's going to be shipping with the Surface. But when it comes to Enterprise, like, you know, IT stuff, uh, this is going to be a big deal. Microsoft is making a, a huge gamble with the Surface tablet, if only because uh, hardware margins have been slipping away and they're making less and less money with software with so many options out there. Really, the only way to make more money is for Microsoft to have both a hardware and software solution to sell to somebody. So that way their margins and, of course, profits will increase. Uh, but they got to get into the enterprise. I mean, they've been in the enterprise on the desktop, but did we not just discuss that the desktop is going to be disappearing at some point if it hasn't really already. In enterprise, certainly it's around, but a lot of people are mobile with the workforce. And, uh, you know, the iPad and Apple uh, have looked at that seriously and made adjustments to the entire platform so that the iPad itself could be more enterprise friendly. Microsoft has been enterprise friendly. They certainly make a lot of money in the enterprise, uh, but they need to make sure they do a few things so that those who love Windows, you know, the IT workforce, uh, would want to adopt a Windows 8 Surface tablet versus an iPad. Part of that is going to be features, but another part of it's going to be price. I mean, cost is a big deal, especially in enterprise. I mean, there's a lot of money out there, but that doesn't mean that it's unlimited. 10 things to remember before you complain. One, don't complain when you're angry. Two, there's a human on the other end. Well, at least usually. Three, be specific. 
Four, give full information. Show your proof of claims. Strong words are okay. Vulgarity is not. Don't exaggerate. Always tell the truth. Keep it short. Keep a copy of everything. That's a nice little laundry list. Oh, I don't think you're going to remember the next time you get upset, but do your best. Looks like AOL has shuttered Emerse, which was a place that you could host your resume. So uh, we've listed a few different options. One, looks like there's LinkedIn, which you may already have a profile for. A personal blog, you could go to About Me, Resume.com, Visual CV. The list kind of goes on and on, but if you're looking to get out there and get a job that someone else might hire you for versus a job that you would create yourself, you gotta make sure your resume is seen. In fact, I've heard some people have been using Pinterest to get their resume out there. Has it worked? I don't know, let us know. Google updated the Gmail iOS app with notification center support plus a persistent login, which is my biggest complaint with Google's iOS apps. Uh, you know, it's nice on Android, you just log in once and then you can connect to that account. I do wish we had that with an iOS. We do for Twitter and we'll soon for Facebook. I don't know if Apple's ever going to open it up to store a centralized Google login. I mean, given that Apple and Google are kind of like doing like, I don't know what this is. I don't even know what that sound effect was. Um, you know, I I, uh, I I never really used Gmail. I have an account. I just never liked the interface. Maybe the iOS interface would be better, but then again, I usually use a desktop app. Yeah, believe it or not, I said desktop app. Oh, even if I happen to use it on a laptop. I mean like a traditional computer screen versus a, a mobile computer screen for the bulk of my email handling. Facebook forces all users over to facebook.com email addresses if you hadn't noticed in your profile. Uh, the Facebook email address that you have, and you likely have it, is the one that's now public. You can change that. You uh, just have to go in, edit your profile, make sure one shows up on the timeline, not the other, make it public, hide it. I don't know why Facebook keeps doing this. I mean, they're, they're doing it, I'm sure, now because I don't know. I, I really don't know why they make these changes. They just seems crazy. Facebook launched a new app feature called Find Friends Nearby. Oh. Well, that's kind of nice. Maybe you're going to a party. You're wondering, hey, who do I know here? Well, you check your Facebook app. Oh, so-and-so is here. Um, do you really want Facebook spying on you? Well, then again, you probably give more of your data to Facebook than they could ever glean from the things that you do. Many people just hand it over freely. They, they tell Facebook everything. They tell everybody through Facebook everything. Uh, but, you know, it may be uh, handy for you if you have a social life outside of social media. Thousands of office printers this weekend were hit by gibberish malware. If you have Windows, uh, you may have been impacted by this uh, insidious piece of malware. If you had a printer, that of course was impacted by it as well. Uh, it's interesting though how, how that kind of worked. I suppose if you were to have malware, it, it would be kind of fun to see your printer spewing gibberish. No, it wouldn't be fun. It's never fun to install malware ever on any operating system. Questions from the community. I love my tech on lockernome.net asks, a 13 inch MacBook Pro or a Retina 15 inch MacBook Pro? Dude, those are like almost two completely different classes of machines. I mean, if only because they're separated by price. Here's the thing. Today, uh, if you don't need to do any video processing or video editing or photo editing or photo processing and you don't need to have the latest and greatest and awesome and you don't have an unlimited budget, uh, I would avoid getting the 15 inch Retina Display MacBook Pro. Go with a 13 inch. Another question on LockerGnome.net from Chris W9, Mac mini 2.3 gigahertz or 2.5 gigahertz? Budget, if you have the money to spend, get as much gigahertz as you can get. If not, I'd go with 2.3, save a few bucks. Cameron asks, is free hosting a good idea? I'm assuming you're talking about website hosting and I would say, no, it's not a good idea. It's a really stupid idea. In fact, the more money you usually save, the more problems you might run into. There are exceptions to every rule. I have a few of my domains hosted on GoDaddy. I have a few more domains hosted on uh, one of those grid accounts. And then I finally moved over all of my primary WordPress domains, the software, WordPress, not WordPress.com, WordPress.org, uh, to a web host that specializes in WordPress hosting. And I've been really happy with them. If you're looking to get the recommendation for your own WordPress hosting needs, just drop me a line, chris at perillo.com. iFreakShow asks, how do you like your bacon? Generally like it cooked, I like it thicker and fattier. If there's anybody I offended today, I apologize. And if I missed you, I'll probably get you tomorrow. We'll see you later.